Alrighty. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to our next installment of our Connecting Conversations series. Um, this is uh, from New Hope Free Methodist Church. My name is Scott Sittig, and I serve as the lead pastor uh, there, and we are located in Rochester, New York. Some of you are listening in from all over the globe, and we are excited to have you with us today. Uh, we're trying something a little new, uh, mostly because it wasn't working for us uh, elsewhere. Uh, it wasn't Ready. working for us on Everybody. Facebook. And, so uh, well, we are trying this through um, our Zoom account, uh, uh, through our YouTube account. And so um, anyway, we're giving it a shot. So we'll see how it works. On the screen today, I have Andrew Waldo. Welcome, Andrew. Hello. How's it going? Good to see you this morning. And uh, Andrew's been uh, connected to New Hope. Uh, how long would you say been at New Hope now? Um, officially, I think it's been since uh, January of 2018. Okay. Um, that's when I moved to the Rochester area. Okay. Great. So I'm excited to uh, interview and have you guys meet Andrew. Um, it's going to be a fun interview today. As you know, the Connecting Conversations series is our attempt at building bridges through isolation and uh, connecting people who uh, sometimes, even when we're in person, we don't have the time or we don't make the time to really get to know somebody. So while we have some time and we're in this uh, season of separation and isolation, we're using these conversations to build those bridges. And maybe when we get back together, it will open some doors for conversation um, in the future. So looking forward to that. And um, grateful to have you all on or whenever you're listening into this. So it's good to have everybody here today. Let me just start, Andrew, and uh, just have you share just briefly, well, why don't you tell us where you're originally from, because I know you're not from Rochester, um, and uh, maybe we'll just talk a little bit about your background, kind of some of the things that you experienced growing up. So tell us where you're from. Well, that is actually a um, three-part mini-series in of itself. <laughs> Um, I am actually originally from, um, my, my family is originally from uh, Syracuse, New York. So you might be thinking, oh, he's just from down the road. Well, that's where the story gets a little bit more interesting. Um, not long after I was born, um, my, uh, my dad's uh, uh, profession um, uh, allowed us uh, to move uh, multiple times throughout my growing up. So we started out in Syracuse and then we moved east to Eastern New York and then from Eastern New York to Vermont and then from Vermont back to Rochester or well, not back to Rochester, but to, to Rochester, New York area, just outside a place called Leroy. And then um, out west to um, Iowa, then down to Virginia, down to North Carolina, over to Kentucky, uh, down to Tennessee, and that's where I left my parents, and then I went to school up in, um, a second round of school up in Chicago, and then, then went to um, uh, Vancouver, BC for grad school, and then decided to come back to the east and uh, spend some time in Michigan, and then met a beautiful a uh, young lady, and uh, wound my wound up finding myself back here in the Rochester area. My goodness, uh, you have crossed the country and uh, multiple. Um, well, you've been to Canada, and so, all right. Just got to ask, what was the profession that took you that your dad had to travel so much? Um, well, it's actually a pretty stable profession. It's just um, he chose jobs that were very much subject to the economy. <laughs> okay. um, he, he is a quality engineer, um, an, an engineer. Um, and he actually, um, when he uh, he grew up moving around as a pastor's kid in the United Methodist Church. Okay. And um, he didn't want to move his family around. So he had a choice between doing government engineering or automotive engineering. And he's like, no, I don't want to move my family around. So I'll choose this more stable environment of the automotive engineering. <laughs> well, he, uh, he um, chose jobs that were uh, suppliers to a lot of automotive uh, manufacturers. And so what they would often do is that when the economy would take a dip, uh, they would lay off the first ones or the, the last ones hired. So my dad was often in that 
uh, category. And so we found ourselves moving from one job to the next when, you know, despite his best efforts to stay in one area, it always seemed like the next job was two States away. (laughs) So that's crazy. All right. So tell us what was your favorite place to live out of all of those places? Um, the top two, I would say, um, well, actually, the top three uh, start with V. Put aside the young lady for a minute. All right. No, no, no. <laughs> no um, Virginia um, is a beautiful area. Um, Vermont and Vancouver, um, all very beautiful areas of uh, this continent. And um, just the area was uh, great, had great, uh, meaningful friendships there. So a great combination of the two. So it was I'd love a lot to. Of fun. I've often wanted to visit Vancouver. I've heard a lot of people talk very highly <clears throat> of that. It seems like a wonderful place to visit and uh, possibly even live. Not that I'm planning to move, but I'd love to visit and uh, check that out. Just the combination, I think, like you've said, told me before, of the mountains and the water and the the greenery It's and the climate, right? Because you're right on the ocean. I don't know. Yeah, if money is no object, Vancouver area, Pacific Northwest is, is great, but... <laughs> Everyone wants to move there. <laughs> yeah. So it's the hip place to be, which means the cost of living is a little bit more, right? So, yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, so we learned a little bit about your dad. What about your mom? And, and tell us about your family. Uh, who else you got? So my mom, it was born and raised Syracuse. Um, she's three or four generations uh, from Syracuse. Um, grew up and saw the turbulent times of the 60s and 70s of Syracuse and the decline uh, of, um, of industry in New, New York state. So, the um, of the rust belt, right? yes. Um, and, um, so with, with that happening, she saw white flight. She lived in inner city, uh, Syracuse. So, um, she actually experienced, um, racism from the other end where she, uh, her family became the minority in her community and, um, and struggled with that. Um, but in spite of that, she has not held any like bitterness in, uh, towards um, uh, people of, of the different uh, skin colors. And actually, you know, my perspectives are because of her perspectives. And so, um, so yeah, that's kind of what she, what, what she grew up with and um, yeah. How many siblings? Uh, one brother um, who is uh, within about a year of me. I would say so. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure some people don't recognize or don't know this about you, but you are a... I am, and I, I, I hesitate to use this because it, I, I want to be able to use it for future, for future uses, but I am a twin, actually, um, and have had some fun with that. And but. An identical one at that, right? Um, actually, officially, we were fraternal, but we look so much alike, we're, I don't know, there's, there's something strange going on there, but we are pretty close, like, if you want to talk about looks, we are identical in looks. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's when I saw you guys for the first time, I, I literally had to double take, I'm not sure I could tell you apart at a glance. That's yeah. Nice. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's an interesting fact that maybe some people don't realize, so. And uh, where is your twin living these days? He lives uh, in Tennessee, um, not far from where my parents have settled down uh, for the current uh, time period. Um, their hearts are still uh, uh, miss the North, but, uh, you know, jobs, what they are, they, they live in Tennessee. And Tennessee is actually, I mean, not all dissimilar to Western New York. You know, it's, it's a common, like, there's a common misconception of, you uh, I think between um, North and South is that, you know, there are a lot of people in Western New York outside of Rochester have very similar um, views on life as people do in Tennessee. And, and the land is very similar. I had friends who came up to uh, Western New York for, uh, they were living in Tennessee, mm-hmm. friends who came up uh, for some sort of like, um, competition or something like that and they're like wow New York State is green I didn't realize that <laughs> yeah, it probably the perception is New York City so everything yeah. is paved over and big tall buildings and everything right so yeah 
just uh, get outside of New York City and yeah, we've got a pretty state. So. I know, it's it's pretty good. So yeah, my brother lives down there um, with his wife and uh, son and they're actually expecting a second one and they've been are really excited about that. Great. So it's fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. So uh, you ended up, uh, let's just kind of jump, you ended up in Chicago for some, uh, for some college work and then ultimately in Vancouver for some uh, master's level work. What, what were you uh, in school for and what were some of your, maybe <clears throat> what are some of your goals professionally as a result? Well, um, I had initially started in Tennessee going to do, um, I really wanted to make, uh, be debt free and make a lot of money um, being wise with my money, um, to support missions, um, to, to live in a way that I could, uh, exp uh, per, uh expand the gospel, uh, through financial means, um, because I did not want to be a missionary and I did not want to be a pastor. They were the last two lit things on my list for being, uh, you know, for ideas of being in career. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> God had different ideas and, um, I felt the calling, um, after I completed my associate's degree in, um, uh, in business and information systems, um, to, uh, pursue the field of missions. Um, I felt strongly that, um, the, the business field was, although interesting, just, just, I don't know, just felt like it wasn't my calling. Um, uh, there are definitely aspects that excited me about it, but it just was like, I, I want to make a difference in the world. I want to, I want to see Christ proclaimed wherever, wherever I go. I want, I, and I want to be involved in that. And um, God directed me to a Wycliffe um, and to their website and, um, I went to an information session. Um, Before you go too far, what's Wycliffe yep. for anybody? Okay, all know? right. So yeah. Right. So uh, for those of you who don't know, Wycliffe is uh, short for Wycliffe Bible Translators, and they work um, to get uh, Bible translations um, and other uh, extra things in addition to that uh, relating to literacy and things like that uh, into other languages. Um, some people might think that every language has um, a translation in uh, their uh, a language, um, but a Bible they, translation. yeah, Bible translation, a Bible translation. Uh, some a lot of these a lot of languages that right now um, a lot of the major ones do yes, but there's a lot of smaller languages. Um, they're called minority groups um, that speak their own language and are not. Um, connected to the national language of all uh, of the countries that we know about. Um, I'm not sure what the number is, but when I started, there were about 2000 um, language groups without scripture. Um, that has gone down since then. Mm -hmm. So, um, and there are a lot of people groups who do not even have any written word in their language. Mm -hmm. That not only is it about getting a Bible translation into their <laughs> language, but also getting um, literacy and um, uh, those kind of things to help um, minority cultures come in, you know, come into the 21st century. And, and it sounds somewhat bad and good, but if you think about it, like these people groups are being taken advantage of by uh, the minor majority groups who uh, have written word. And so one of the things that you, is, uh, that uh, can really help these minority groups is have written word and um, transition uh, and in, to be able to interact with the majority groups. Uh, so um, anyway. Some really fascinating work and uh, Wycliffe uh, is short for John Wycliffe, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, for, for anybody that's interested in some church history, do you know the, the history behind John Wycliffe? Do you know how it started? Yes, um, John Wycliffe uh, basically was the first person, there had been attempts before, but he was like one of the first persons to translate the Latin version of uh, the Bible into um, English, um, Middle Ages English, um, in, in um, I think it was England, wasn't it? Um, and uh, he was um, condemned by the church. 
And although he uh, was not killed for um, doing that, uh, they wanted to kill him, but um, uh, they, after his death, they actually um, uh, dug up his body and burned his bones and to, as a representation of how they felt about John Wycliffe. But he was the first person to uh, translate the Bible for the common man so that they could understand. So that's uh, kind of the history behind why Wycliffe Bible Translators uh, is so passionate. And um, yeah, that story goes back, I think, to the late 14th and early 15th century. Yep. And uh, Wycliffe was a, a real pioneer um, and uh, created a lot of controversy. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. So uh, you wanted to potentially work with Wycliffe. You did for a little while. Uh, keep going. Tell us a little bit more. So uh, the next thing I knew that I wanted to be in Wycliffe. And so the next thing I needed to do was get education in that field. So I uh, looked around and I very much wanted to go to school without going into debt. And uh, even though it's even harder today, it, is, it was just as hard to t 10 years ago to, to do that. And so the only school that really came to mind was Moody Bible Institute. And they have the unique, one of the uh, unique things is that they pay for uh, tuition for their students. Um, there is room and board, so it's not free, but it is significantly less than um, a lot of other private institutions. Yep. Um, in, uh, Moody, short for Dwight L. Moody yep. in, uh, in downtown Chicago. And uh, Moody was a big revivalist and evangelist uh, in the early 20th century. Well, late 19th century, early 20th century in Chicago. So. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Moody Bible Institute was founded in 1884, I believe. I, I'm, I, in the 1880s. Um, so if I'm incorrect on that, uh, but it is right around that time period that uh, he started. Um, and um, he, the, the really great thing about Moody is that um, for the longest time, they have stayed in this middle of, of Chicago. So it has given uh, uh, students a great opportunity to interact with um, various cultures, um, the urban life, um, and um, it is a mission field, like Chicago is a mission field, um, very much, it's a, it's a great training ground for uh, people who are interested in ministry. Um, even, even if you don't necessarily agree with all their stands, I would recommend um, going there just because it would challenge you in terms of uh, biblical and um, the, just the diversity of Chicago itself. Um, uh, this um, one of the great things about uh, Moody Bible Institute is that they have um, what's called practical Christian ministry. Um, and it's basically like mini internships every year where you are um, involved in some sort of um, church and community um, community development um, uh projects. So like Bible studies, um, teaching English as a second language, um, homeless shelters, um, different things. So like it's, it's a broad gamut of Christian ministry that you can do. And it, it, it really does train you to be engaged in, in Christian ministry. Um, you had, a, you had a good experience in Moody. Mm -hmm. and that uh, just kind of tell us what that did, what in terms of jumping off point for you. Well, it, it really gave me. Um, I mean, I I have personally had the benefit of having um, two parents who serve the Lord, so there was a lot of foundational knowledge that I already had. But there was it challenged me in what that looks like and and what other you know even though Moody has a specific set of uh, uh, doctrinal positions, Moody also pulls from uh, a broad spectrum of, uh, of, of backgrounds. Uh, so definitely challenged with different people's viewpoints and um, uh, about faith and about Christ and how they view, uh, you know, how they view the things in Bible, in the Bible. And so, uh, it was it was a great time of sharp iron, iron ironing iron sharpening iron, there you go. <laughs> and it um, 
it was also like it it wasn't like easy it wasn't i wouldn't say that it was like this wonderful kumbaya moment it was challenging like when when iron sharpens iron it isn't a a pleasant not pleasant pleasant seem like but like not a fluffy experience no, so it's, it's education and yeah education yeah. would be uh kind of stretching us and pushing us and yeah so tell us kind of where where it led you where did where did it push you to, to move to from that point so um still like you know um you know there's classmates who went to moody very on fire for serving in full-time ministry and um and came away from their moody experience and were like you know what i'm not really wanting to do that and for me it was like you know what i i still want to do ministry um i still um want to uh i want christ to be known when i'm walking around not that i'm perfect or anything like that but just that's very much what i was wanting to do and and I still was very passionate about uh, Bible translation. And so after Moody, I was like, well, I need to do some grad school to do for more Bible translation. And so I had three choices. And it was a very spiritual, very, very spiritual wrestling of the three choices. There was Dallas, there was North Dakota, and then there was British Columbia. And I looked at those three and I was like, Dallas is hot. North Dakota is flat. <laughs> and British Columbia is beautiful. Um, let me th see here. I'm going to go with British Columbia. That was a super spiritually motivated choice. Yeah, wonderful. What, <clears throat> what, what school did you end up in out there? So there is this school called Trinity Western University. Um, and it is, it is located just outside of Vancouver, BC, in, in a town called Langley. And uh, they have a... Um, a strong connection with Wycliffe Bible Translators, and uh, they have a school within that school called Canada Institute of Linguistics. Okay. And they, uh, Canada Institute of Linguistics, trains people to do Bible translation. Um, um, the official, uh, the official um, uh, degree is uh, applied linguistics, a master's in applied linguistics. Cool. So it is very high level, rigorous uh, um, linguistic work. It is like the stuff that you uh, research and study could very be well, very well be used in uh, linguistic, uh, paper, not papers, but newsletters, what it, you know, like the academic newsletters that go out. So it's very, very rigorous. And, um, and but the, the community there is amazing. Like, like Moody was fun and enjoyable and there's a great, a lot of people, but like, uh, can I, everyone was focused on going to reach the people, pe reach people for the gospel and in other cultures. And so we were all focused there. And it was also like a smaller community. Um, and it just was like, it's so enjoyable and, um, and, well, I can, I can imagine there'll be a lot of folks uh, who are tuning in who might want to ask you some more about both of these schools. Mm -hmm. uh, just for the sake of time, though, did yep. you tell us kind of, did you, did you graduate from that school? And, and then kind of, where did you end up? Because I, I personally know the story. I know it didn't quite follow the linear path you were hoping. Um, yeah, so but, uh, tell us how you got I'm trying to get us back to Rochester here. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's <clears throat> my my uh, journey. My journey is like the epic of Odysseus, you know, just kind of. <laughs> but it, but anyway, um, so I got to I got to the school there, and I was burnt out from school. I had three years of community college underneath my belt. I had four years at uh, Moody Bible Institute, and then by the time I got there, I, you know. Uh, two years of, of grad school. And I'm like, I am ready to go overseas. Um, so I put my um, graduate studies on hold. I had gotten some certificates for um, certain jobs that I could do in Wycliffe. And so I was like, you know what? I'll do these certificates. I wanna go out overseas. So I, became a member of Wycliffe Bible Translators and started the process of raising partners to go overseas. 
And so um, as soon as I left school, I sought the Lord as to where I should start the process. And so I felt the Lord calling me to Michigan, where my uncle um, lives and specifically my grandmother lives. Um, and I wanted to spend some time with her before I went overseas because I didn't know like if, you know, I'd be overseas and, you know, she'd pass away and I'd not have any, you know, not spent really any time with her. Um, and so I spent a year in Michigan trying to get ready to go to Wycliffe uh, Bible uh, Translators to go overseas to Asia and um, and was having a great time spending time with my grandma. And um, in the midst of that, I uh, went to a friend's wedding in Western New York. Um, and uh, the family had been close friends with uh, my uh, family. And so uh, came uh, went across Canada. It's only actually about five hours from Flint, Michigan to uh, Rochester, New York area. So I went there and uh, was enjoying the wedding. And I noticed this beautiful young lady there. And she just happened to be the sister of the bride. And um, we struck up conversation. And um, conversation quickly turned into romance. And... Um, we started a very, uh, God led, God directed, um, relationship that, um, we went through a lot of challenging things as, as you guys know, I'm married to Christina, uh, uh, Baxter, who's now Waldo. Um, and those of you who have been at the church a long time know that, uh, she was once married before to Jacob Baxter, who tragically passed away in 2014. Um, so there was a lot of stuff to unpack um, from that. Um, on le not least of all was that not only what did Christina lose her husband, but she is also the mother of three beautiful children. And um, so we went into this relationship very intentional and very um, serious because there was not time to uh, there, there was not time to mess around <laughs> there. We, we had to figure out if this was something serious or not. And so um, we spent the first month diving into deep conversations that normally would take couples a year or two to, to process. And God walked us through all of those and God knit us together in ways that were quite miraculous. Um, God, it just like, I don't know. It's just was divine miracles in relationship. It was amazing. Um, it's been quite a, quite a journey. I know it was a Quite a journey of recovery for Chrissy and, and really the whole New Hope Church family um, walking through that. Um, just tell us briefly, if you can, just just give me an insight. What was it like coming into that from the outside and, and seeing not only, well, meeting Chrissy and, and hearing about her own story of grieving and recovery, but but then trying to acclimate to a church that was also grieving and, and still um, recovering from the loss of of a magnanimous personality uh, that we know as Jake? Um, I think that, I think that the Lord was really like keeping my eyes open to the things that needed to be open and blinding them to things that I didn't need to worry about. Mm. Um, I think that there was plenty of things that could have derailed the relationship had I focused on certain aspects. Mm -hmm. Um, but because God had kind of like directed me, like, this is the next step. This is what I want you to do. I want you to pursue a relationship with Christina. Um, and, uh, you know, and it just felt like this was where I was supposed to go. So mm -hmm. being focused on getting to know her, getting to know the kids, um, and, uh, and walking through the pain and, um, and the challenges, um, it, it wasn't daunting because God was guiding me and, um, and to say it was easy and it was not easy, but 
with God's guidance, it was, I don't know. It, I don't know. When God guides you through something, like when God walks with you and directs your steps, it's incredible what things can happen. So there's a, there's this sense that there was, there's resolve and there's persevering strength, right. To get mm-hmm. through it. Um, but it doesn't necessarily take away the, the awkwardness, the awkward moments, the no. conversations and, and even the uncomfortable ones that leave us, uh, you know, somewhat hurt or in pain or, yeah, it, it's an yeah. awkward mix of yeah. knowing that we can get through it, but it it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Um, and and I know personally you you persevered through some things uh, in terms of just relationships and the dynamics that were all involved in that. But um, but you and Chrissy have knitted yourselves together in a beautiful way and um, really kind of focused on that family and and the kids and um, pretty. Uh, pretty amazing to see how all of that has come full circle for Chrissy and really for you um, being connected to her. So we've been really excited to see that relationship develop. And and partly I just wanted people to get to know you for that reason, because those were really difficult days coming into that recovery process. Mm -hmm. um, How would you say you guys are doing now? How, how, How do you feel things are going now? I would say things are going, I mean, overall things are going great and God is really like in and through our family in a relationship. And to be honest, it is only because of God that this is working. Um, And mine and Christina's willingness to, to wrestle with the less than pleasant things of life and give them to God. And it is, it is a, is a daily thing. It's not like this, everything is like happily ever after. I mean, in some sense it is, but like, it's, it's, it's also the day to day and the, it, it is wrestling with personalities and wrestling with our, um, our flesh, my flesh, you know, there's, you know, there every one of us is imperfect being saved by grace, you know? And so um, we have to, uh, we are always faced with, um, you know, there are days that are worse than others, you know, like snapping at the kids or, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, fighting with, with Christina, you know, there it's, you know, but God also walks us through this in this, this process of God reminding reminding me of these failings and, and and being willing to submit. And it's, and again, it's a process. I'm not there. It, you know, it's still. Well, the, the yeah. toughest thing, if, if I could just have you kind of share just briefly, I mean, one of the toughest things for you, I mean, you're walking into a relationship, first of all, becoming a husband. That's, yeah. that's, that's enough all by itself. Mm-hmm. Anybody who's married knows that adapting to marriage is tough, but you're also insta dad, right? Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Zero know? to a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> That's it. And so, um, yeah, that can be super daunting, super overwhelming. And, um, yeah, just, just briefly, what was that like? Um, it was, it was, like the only words that come to mind and it sounds over religious, but it was God led. Like, I can't, I can't describe like, yes, there was like from the outside, absolutely daunting. And if anyone tries to do it on their own, like more power to them, right? (laughs) It's it's like, uh, good luck to you. Cause Mm -hmm. the, I would not recommend doing this unless God has specifically called you to do it and there is specific assurances and, and being in close walk with God, like seeking God's face in these things um, is, is, is so important. Like it's, it, that is, that is why the dauntingness doesn't feel as daunting. Like it, 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 again, there's things that I'm learning right now that I'm wrestling with right now that, you know, but I, I don't want anyone to think when looking at mine and Christina's relationship as, oh, I, I could do that. 
It's like, no, 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 <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> you know, it, it is, it is the walking with God that, uh, and again, I'm not saying I'm like, like this great is just, is always looking, knowing that I am not adequate in myself, that the great things that can happen are because God has, has gone before me and his, and God ha, and acknowledging that the things that I do well are not only given to him, you know, amazing miracle things, but also the talents and abilities mm -hmm. that, um, that, I, that he's given me and meshing those together. Um, everything that, that I have, everything is like the good things that are in my life are because God has provided them, whether it's talents and abilities, great events, uh, wife and family, uh, great community. Um, God has blessed me with these wonderful things. And I mean, it, it really comes down to that is like, that's. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a beautiful testimony. And, and I know that there's so much more we could talk about with it. Yeah. I really want to encourage people to follow up with you and, and hear more yeah. of the story because, you know, especially for those who, who are in maybe secondary relationships or considering mm -hmm. them, um, uh, and I say secondary, yours, yours was primary, but um, yeah. coming into a remarriage situation or something like that. I mean, there's so many things that uh, those who have walked that journey can can share and, and people can learn from. And I just know you have uh, such a big heart for for God and, and also just uh, trusting in God and, and having him help you guide, help guide you through these times. Uh, your testimony and, and Chrissy's testimony, you as a couple, you have a lot to share, a lot to offer. And I'm really encouraged by watching you guys grow and, and adapt to together. Uh, just real briefly, in the closing minutes that we have, um, mm -hmm. what are some of the just little things that people don't know about Andrew, uh, you know, hobbies, things that you like to do? What are a couple of those things? And, uh, and then I'll close with another thought. Well, um, I... My, my main hobby, you know, is just God, you know, I, I, no, I'm just kidding. I mean, he's, he's <laughs> definitely a center, but, um, let's see. One of my main hobbies is, um, uh, board games, um, board games that have depth that are mostly non Hasbro related. <laughs> um, and by depth, we're talking like you need several hours at a minimum to play. Yeah. So, um, or make you think. Um, there's a lot of games out there that just you know, you roll and move kind of things, and and those are great at some point. But you know, some people uh, have been turned off by board games because they they liken it to well, it's board, you know, b o r e d <laughs> games. And, but anyway, so I love board games. I um, have a passion for soccer. Um, me and Christina love to to travel. Um, we, uh, we, I mean, I have family in Tennessee. Um, I have family in Michigan. Um, so, uh, we are, are always jumping at the chance to, to visit, uh, new places. Um, and, uh, but, um, um, yeah. Um, I do dabble in uh, video games just a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Haven't been able to shed that from uh, <laughs> my chi my childhood, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure nowadays you don't have quite as much time as you once did. But uh, video games remain a little bit of an outlet for for some of us. I know. So. Yeah, I definitely like. Oh, so so just kind of like give you guys an idea of why I like board games. Board games allows face to face interaction with people. And the reason why I've taken to them is because I enjoyed video games where I played with other people and being able to have board games that are fun and engaging with other people and creating memories with those people is why I play board games. It is an opportunity to um, hang out with people and enjoy each other's company and share laughs um, and and get to know people and, and bring people out of their shells in ways that uh, conversation doesn't. And conversation is great. Like I love, we love having people over here. So that's another hobby. If you want to call it a hobby and, you know, uh, interest in life is we love 
um, having people over to our house and sharing meals with them and hanging out with them because that is that is one of like Christina's eyes feeling is like one of the major aspects of our Christian life is just fellowship. Um, so well, I think anybody listening in today kind of gets the sense of uh, just your your love for God, your passion for God, and and your love to communicate and talk about your life and your stories and. I think uh, some people, I, I hope uh, if you're listening in today, uh, look forward to the opportunity of getting together with Andrew and Chrissy, and um, I know they'd love to have you over to their house. Uh, I can imagine these days of isolation are, are really hard for hospitable folks. <laughs> um, so uh, I know you guys are doing well, just because I know uh, I've been in touch with you, but um, I can only imagine what you're looking forward to in terms of hosting some more families and dinners and having some more games. Um, I know the, the hardest thing for you, if I could add, well, I'll ask it, but I'm gonna prompt you. I think I know it is, you had uh, scheduled a big event uh, for your birthday and uh, the isolation kicked in right yeah. when it was happening. So uh, tell us just briefly that that really difficult conundrum of, of uh, how to handle the isolation early on here. I mean, uh, to say that I was uh, not uh, happy was, I mean, I was definitely upset about it because it just was like, just so worse to, timing. But yeah. yeah so, was, so to explain, you, you had yeah. a scheduled game day, right? Yeah. So like, so my birthday was March 20th and the um, isolation stuff for New York state came down like right, like the 19th or 20th. I don't know what the official day was, but it was like right then. And so basically um, had to cancel um, several events, um, unfortunately. I mean, understand, I mean, like, I'm not like angry at, at people, you know, but, um, but definitely frustrated because like, you know, it's, you know, out of my control and, you know, I was really looking forward to it. So it was, it was challenging to kind of like, okay, process. And, um, but, you know, I mean, it's also been really good, you know, to be able to, you know, in some respects, slow down. We've been homeschooling the kids here and it's been really fun to, um, very challenging, but very fun to um, be able to um, teach them things that we, you know, we know. And um, God has really guided us through feeling like that, you know, through our uh, uh, ad hoc um, curriculum, <laughs> you know, um, but um, it's, you know, it's been good. Um, definitely looking forward to being able to uh, get out more and, you know, hang out with more people. But it's, it's been a cool, uh, bittersweet kind of time to, to rest, you know. So it's, it's, uh, it's been all of that. And, uh, you know, for the duration of whatever we have ahead of us. Uh, yeah. The mixed bag we know but uh i know that particular day was uh, was was tough on you so um we've all had those moments and so i guess just to say we can all relate to one another in in different ways so well i appreciate your time andrew and uh just thank you for being on sharing a little bit about your life your story and kind of how you ended up at new hope and uh glad to have you a part of the family here and part of the church um so it's been a, my privilege to get to know you a little bit, and we'll look forward to doing that uh, more in the days to come. If anybody has any uh, comments or, or questions for Andrew, please put them in the comments, and uh, we'll be following up. He'll be following up, and uh, he would love to have a conversation, private message him, even call him, whatever, and uh, love to have some more conversation with you. So, Andrew, thank you. And, no problem. Uh, and, Good to be connected to everybody here, and I uh, hope you have a wonderful day. This will be, right now it's on YouTube, I think, um, so look over on our Facebook page, uh, New Hope Free Methodist Church, and also in our New Hope Life group, and you'll find this uh, on that uh, site as well. Uh, I'll get all that posted up for you a little bit later, so. All right. Thank you, Andrew. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.